Good morning. Uh, my name is Julie Thompson. I'm the executive director of PAC TV here in Plymouth, Massachusetts, and I am hosting the live COVID ID up, uh, COVID-19 sorry update from the town of Kingston today. We will be having forums from the town of Kingston every Tuesday uh, and Friday at 11:30 to um, 1:15 each each week for the foreseeable future, so that your town officials can bring you up-to-date information from a various amount of departments, etc. We will be having a, um, a call-in, uh, excuse me, an um, email that you can send your questions in if you have any questions during this forum. And it's kingstoninfo at pactv.org. Again, that's kingstoninfo at pactv.org. And that's for any questions that come about after you're listening to the, um, the presentation today. And today we have joining us um, Josh Warren, who is the chair of the Board of Selectmen, Adam Hatch, who is the deputy fire chief, and Paula Rossi Clapp, who is um, the uh, director of the Council on Aging. So without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Josh Warren. Josh? For Hold on, Josh. On, Julie. OK, go ahead. Great. Uh, Julie, thank you for organizing this. And, and thanks to everybody at PAC TV who is um, really changing the way that they operate, the way that they support the communities uh, that they serve uh, in this very uncertain time. Um, folks who uh, have been watching uh, town business meetings in Kingston will note that we are now doing things uh, very differently. Uh, we're calling in telephonically. Uh, we'll be using Zoom, which is the platform that we're on currently. Um, and I, I just really want to thank everybody at PAC TV who's, who's made tremendous accommodations to make sure that we uh, can still uh, deliver information to our residents. Um, and and uh, it's, it's just been um, wonderful watching them uh, work through this uh, very difficult time. Um, I'm joined today by two members of Kingston's emergency uh, management team, Deputy Fire Chief Adam Hatch and Paula Rossi Clapp, uh, who Julie mentioned is the Director of Elder Affairs at the Kingston Council on Aging. Um, and, and both have a, a tremendous level of expertise uh, in their departments. And we thought that it would be good to have them on today just to, to have a brief conversation about uh, some of what's going on behind the scenes so that residents who are at home um, and, and may not be um, visiting the town's website every day. Again, we, we do daily up, updates at www.kingstonmass.org. Um, anybody who may not have access to um, a computer or the internet uh, may be able to, to, to learn a thing or two about what's going on behind the scenes uh, within the emergency management team today. Um, so, Adam, my, my first question is going to be to you. Um, a lot of folks have probably heard that yesterday Governor Baker came out uh, with an emergency order um, regarding the closure of non-essential businesses, asking folks to, to work remotely and businesses to operate um, outside of their, their typical brick-and-mortar uh, setups. He also asked the uh, Department of Public Health to issue a stay-at-home advisory that will last uh, right now for two weeks. And um, I'm wondering if you can speak to why uh, the governor asked for that stay-at-home advisory and, and really what the importance is of, of a directive like that at this time. Sure, Josh, I'd be happy to answer that. Um, so with the orders that the uh, governor put out as far as the uh, stay at home, the voluntary stay at home, um, as we saw in other countries, specifically Italy, um, that didn't happen. And by the time those orders were issued, um, the outbreak was so far ahead that it, they're still playing catch up. And I think Governor Baker is trying to use all the tools he has um, to try and avoid that and not, as he was saying, shut down the state, although that could change at any time. Um, he said several times he does not want to shut the state down. We still need to conduct some business uh, to get things done. And the stay at home order for non-essential employees will help uh, with the flattening of the curve that we've heard so much of. Um, oftentimes we've been seeing that people are infected and don't know it until their uh, sim symptoms uh, surface. And by that time, it's too late. And you don't know how many people you've had they come in contact with in that time frame. So by ordering the stay at home for the two weeks, that seems to be the, the wheelhouse for um, knowing that you've been infected. Usually in that time, the symptoms will have surfaced and you know, um, and you're staying away from other people, um, conducting your business telephonically through Zoom, that kind of thing, and just trying to limit your exposure to other people. And I think it's it's more of a preemptive strike on the governor's uh, in the governor's arsenal, so to speak, um, to try and curb any sort of mass outbreak in the state. 
Great, thank you. And and just to just to further explain, um, you know, what flattening the curve means. My understanding is, and and you know, feel free to to um, add to it. The the hope is that by taking drastic measures like this, and really encouraging folks to only go out for for the essentials, for trips to the pharmacy, doctor's office, uh, groceries, food, things like that. Um, it really gives first responders like you, um, the, the men and women who are at BID um, and Social Shore Hospital, um, and, and our federal government, the opportunity to, to build the resources um, and really build the infrastructure that's needed uh, when and if we, we do see a, a major um, increase in, in confirmed cases of COVID-19. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, it's, it's sort of given us a little bit of a lead time. So if and when we do have that outbreak, so to speak, that everybody keeps talking about. Um, we will have had a little bit of time to gather more resources, to stockpile a little bit more. Um, so it, it's given us a little bit of a, a jump, I suppose you could say. Okay. And we, we've certainly heard a lot about um, who who is at risk of more serious complications. Um, certainly folks that have underlying health conditions, uh, primarily respiratory conditions, and then also our seniors. Um, if someone's young and doesn't have underlying health conditions and, and isn't deemed to be um, in serious risk for complications from, from COVID-19, why should they take this order seriously? Uh, even without the underlying um, medical problems, um, the age, you can still be a carrier. Uh, once you've been exposed, you can expose other people and not even know it, as we said earlier. So the fact that you're a young, a young person, an elderly or middle-aged, um, you can still be, I don't want to say infected, but ex and exposed, and then carry that somewhere else. So it's just as important for young people uh, that are healthy to heed the shelter, I don't want to say shelter place, but heed the stay at home order um, for that reason. You don't want to become a carrier and potentially infect somebody that it will that it will uh, be a detriment to. Understood. Um, and, and what precautions are you are you seeing put in place at the uh, at the firehouse and, and uh, throughout town for our first responders? So we regularly disinfect the equipment anyway, um, but we're doing that more frequently. We've been able to procure some um, industrial uh, sanitizing foggers, I guess you could call them. So daily bull stations are being uh, sanitized. The equipment is being sanitized every time it comes back from a call. Um, we're trying to limit the amount of people that we put into a situation, a normal medical call, um, sp specifically if, um, especially if, um, there is some question that somebody may may have an exposure. Um, we're utilizing our normal uh, uh, PPE, our protective equipment, gloves, masks, gowns. Um, we've got a small stockpile of them, um, so we're using those sparingly. Um, but we've also, as as you had mentioned, gone to some online platforms for our inspections, um, so that people that are trying to buy a home people that do have some time sensitive business can still conduct it to the best of their ability and same, just trying to limit our exposure to the public um, and their exposure to us. We've basically closed down the fire station to public access, unless it's obviously an emergency. And, and understanding that there, um, there is a national shortage on, on PPE, the, the personal protective equipment that you mentioned. Um, I know that, that you and chief Douglas had had a discussion last week about uh, folks who are at home that may have, um, medical grade gloves may have um, N95 respirator masks or Tyvek suits um, that may be willing to donate those at this time, given um, you know that, that we are anticipating and we are seeing a national shortage. Um, if somebody at home does have items like that, uh, what, what's the process if they, they want to get those into the hands of Kingston's first responders? Yeah, if, if any resident has anything like that, specifically the N95 masks, the hospital grade or medical grade um, gloves, any sort of Tyvek suits or gowns, um, we we'd be more than more than happy to, for uh, to take the, those donations. We have a uh, a tote in the foyer of the Pembroke Street Fire Station on Route 27 um, that they if they want to come by and drop those off, um, we can put them you can put them in that box. Um, so we do we do you know I don't want the the people to think we don't have. Um, equipment we do, but obviously, like you said, we're anticipating um, needing more than what we do have. So if anybody has any of that available, you know, that would be fantastic if they could be willing to donate those to us. Great. And and Adam, just one more question before I, uh, b before I um, turn it over to Paula. Um, I know last week uh, there were some concerns and you actually uh, recorded a, a public service announcement that's been airing on WATD regarding um, I guess, home use uh, and residential use of, of personal protective equipment. 
Can you just speak to that? I know there was um, there was a general uh, concern about um, fire safety with folks at home using some of this equipment. Correct. So this personal protective equipment is basically, uh, it's flammable. So what we're asking people is to just exercise uh, some basic fire safety pr uh, practices. Don't wear your uh, rubber gloves or mask or any sort of a gown or suit um, around any open flames or when cooking. Um, obviously, they're very bulky, and we would not want to see uh, somebody suffer any sort of serious burns while trying to protect themselves from becoming ill. Um, so we just ask that if you're going to do any of those things, please make sure you're not wearing anything anything like that uh, because it is flammable and it, it can cause some serious injuries. Okay, thank you. Um, Paula, this, this next question is going to be for you. Um, so as, as we had just discussed, you know, we're, we're really um, hoping that everyone heeds the, um, the, the governor's uh, advice to, to stay at home unless it's a, an essential trip out. Um, but individuals who are 65 years old uh, or older are, are really the population of Kingston residents that you serve. Uh, they're at a higher risk for severe illness of, of COVID-19. Um, can you tell us what you and your team at the Council on Aging are, are currently doing to support that population and make sure that we're able to continue to provide services um, as this goes on? Uh, sure. We are definitely the communication line for the seniors in town, and uh, we are providing the outreach services and wellness calls. I still uh, encourage people to call in. Um, we are uh, trying to prioritize certain uh, groups of people. Uh, we've created, with the help of the fire department, um, a, a survey for di disaster relief um, assistance form. And you can see that on um, the website. It's on the front page of the town website, as well as it's on the COA uh, webpage. I encourage people with disabilities or underlying conditions that are seniors in town to register with us. It's a confidential um, file that we keep, but in cases like this, these are the priority people that we're going to reach out to first to double check, make sure everything's okay, what can we do for you. Um, we're also contacting people who re receive Meals on Wheels, and we're setting up uh, through Old Colony Elder Services some temporary Meals on Wheels service through them. Um, we are reaching out, you know, we, we're starting, you know, the eight people 85 and older. Um, if we're not getting to them, we need them to call us because we're very interested in getting you in our system. Uh, we are continuing to um, provide transportation. Uh, it is limited, as, as um, Adam was saying on his vehicles as well. Our van drivers uh, sanitize it after every run and uh, we just received from Gatra who's been wonderful with us with transportation uh, they came on and they provided extra sanitizing uh, systems for individuals that use the van as well so we're doing double duty on that and um, yes I, I oh and also I wanted to mention too that I'm spreading the word that the animal shelter has a wet nose pet food pantry program and Joanna Boudreau, the director of the animal shelter is encouraging seniors that if you're having some difficulties getting out getting your pet food to call them they will help and they will actually deliver the food to your house so give Joanna a call at 781-585-0529 but you can also get her on the website so um, thank you yes. I just want to take the opportunity quick too to remind folks uh, what Julie said when we when we kicked off uh, this update um, if anybody at home watching has questions uh, for myself, for Adam, or for Paula that they'd like answered, they can send them to kingstoninfo at pactv.org. And um, this is the first time that we've, we've uh, tried to do sort of a, an open uh, Q&A portion on one of Kingston's uh, COVID-19 updates. So we'll do our best to, um, to field those questions. But again, um, that's, uh, let me just pull that up again, kingstoninfo at pactv.org uh, for anybody who's at home and may have questions. Um, Paula, uh, what's the most common question that you're fielding right now? Or what are some of the most common questions that you're fielding uh, from folks who are at home, from folks who are, are reaching out for services uh, at, at the Council on Aging? Well, right now, everyone has been receiving their, we, we mailed out last week, 3,300 um, letters 
to seniors in town. Many seniors are registered in our system, but we're getting more of the phone calls to uh, regarding those letters and saying, I'd like to be registered in, in the system in the, in the, at the senior center. So um, it seems to be that we don't have any um, panic concerns right now. We're reading, getting the phone calls for registering and we're just preparing for the what if occasion. Um, we're contacting and, and seeing if we can get um, donations, food donations, and see what we need to line up for for the next coming two weeks. Understood. And, and um, you know, just from chatting with you last week, my, I, I understand that you're actually now receiving calls from other communities as well. Um, I, I think that's certainly a, a testament to, to the great work that you and your team are doing. But um, are, are, are we unique in that we're, we're still um, staffed over at the COA and, and um, you know, sort of ramping up services at this point? A lot of towns have gone to uh, um, the at home uh, with the COAs and we're on site answering re the real time calls. And I'm not saying that it's any better or, or uh, at, at all. I'm just saying that the Kingston seems to be at the ready um, and is very well prepared um, over in all their departments to service the public the minute they have a call or concern. So um, we are a little unique in that where I can see that the other COAs are starting to do more of the um, out service at home. And, and what are you and, and your staff members doing to, um, to, to account for that, uh, I guess, increased demand that, that we foresee? So while we do have a great software system that, that logs everything, where uh, all the calls, all the concerns, um, and we're able to just put, you know, compartmentalize any issues that need to maybe um, be addressed. But right now we're, we're, I mean, my team is just doing an amazing job taking care of every phone call that comes through here and every email and any message that needs to get through to us. We're getting back to them within, uh, you know, within that moment or um, within hours. Great, great. And, and you know, I, I certainly appreciate, um, I've, I've seen how hard you're working. I've seen how hard your team is working. Um, I understand too that you guys have, have put some systems in place within the building and within staffing um, to make sure that you're protecting yourselves and your staff uh, or yourself and your staff throughout this. Can you just uh, speak, speak to those uh, precautions and, and what you're doing right now to make sure that uh, those who work under you are um, able to report to work and able to continue to work uh, in as safe an environment as possible. And, and that is that is true. Um, the seniors are our priority, but for me, the staff is is one of my top priorities as well. We're all uh, lucky enough to have uh, the ability to be in different offices, and even even the van drivers are able to stay in a, in an area when they're not um, doing a run. Um, and the kitchen is se segregated as well. We have been provided great. Um, uh, sanitizing equipment from facilities so that our bathrooms, anything that we touch, um, we're all on staff is, is all aware of the protocol. And we're actually doing it, we're following the distancing um, recommendations and we take care of business. Uh, if we need to speak to a staff, we're at the doorway. So um, we're really very conscientious of not spreading anything over here, so. Thank you, uh, thank you. I'm, I'm just gonna, Julie, um, anything Anything you'd like to ask? A couple things. Um, not only would I like to ask, but I'd like to inform. Um, number one, this forum is being brought live on Comcast 15 and Verizon 42 for everyone in Kingston. It is also uh, available on, on basically on the internet via our, um, our website. And if you go to pactv.org and you um, do backslash um, live, you can see this live also that way. There's a lot of people in town that don't have cable anymore, and um, for those people, they can still participate in these forums by, by watching. Also, the two different services that we are gonna be offering the town of Kingston are forums like this, which are gonna be every Tuesday and Friday from 11.30 till, I mean, excuse me, 10.30 to approximately 11.15, where a number of, anyone you want can be on, uh, anyone that the town deems uh, necessary, especially um, as things change day to day and a, a new department might need to come on. But we'll also have slots for actual meetings, board and committee meetings that have to take place. Now this is really difficult um, for all of the towns because everyone having to do remote participation is, is difficult. We are going to 
provide the towns with Zoom meetings similar to this, but the meetings will not be hosted by us. We will, we will, we will facilitate them for you, but it's the actual board or committee that would be doing the meetings. More information will follow. And as soon as we have meetings set up and scheduled, we will let everybody know through social media, your web uh, site, et cetera. The one thing to keep in mind is as things have changed around here at PAC TV too, the time for your meetings is no longer going to be 7 o'clock at night that we can cover. We can't cover meetings from the, the townhouse anymore. We have to cover meetings, Zoom meetings, which are remote meetings, from here at PAC TV. So our, our ability to cover meetings will be, and forums will be from 9 a.m. in the morning till approximately 4, 4.30 in the afternoon, Monday through Friday. I've sent out a schedule to um, the different town managers and um, people that need to actually schedule meetings. And as soon as we have those scheduled, we'll get that schedule out to you. Um, now, I have a couple questions for you. Um, last week's selectmen's meeting, you, you kind of did a little bit differently. Um, and last night's planning board meeting was, was trying to done through, um, through te uh, telephone communication. Josh, can you just talk about your impression of meetings going forward and what the town can expect? Sure. Um, so, so as we said at the top of the program, um, and, and Julie, again, hats off to you guys and, and the work that you've done at PAC TV to support this. Um, as much as we'd like to, to move forward with business as usual, that's just simply not the case. Um, we're, we're in the midst of a, a serious public health crisis. Um, it's a pandemic. We don't know when it's going to end. And um, our ability to, to convene uh, public meetings in the townhouse um, will not happen for the foreseeable future. So this past week, we had our um, first selectmen's meeting. I think it was the first Kingston town business meeting that was held telephonically. Um, from, from where I was sitting at home uh, in my kitchen, it seemed to run well. Um, what I've heard from residents is that uh, it, it, it also ran well. I mean, there's certainly a little bit of confusion when you're trying to take a roll call vote, um, just not stepping on your, your fellow board members' toes as, as you know, they say I or nay. Um, but all in all, I think, um, you know, given, uh, given the situation and given the importance of the work that, that still has to get done outside of, of really responding to this ongoing uh, COVID-19 issue in Kingston, um, things went well. Um, as, as you mentioned last night, we also had a, um, a planning board meeting that was, that was held telephonically. Um, I, I was in a meeting uh, specific to our response to COVID-19, so I wasn't able to, to watch that at home. Um, but my understanding was uh, the technology was, was a little bit awkward um, but the system was in place, the system was functioning, um, and that meeting was able to, uh, to be held. Um, Julie, as you mentioned, uh, with PAC-TV unable to cover uh, meetings in Room 200, things will look a little bit differently for, for folks at home, uh, even from what they may have seen on Tuesday night at the Selectman's meeting or last night for the Planning Board meeting. Um, what they can probably get used to is something uh, that looks a little bit more like what they're seeing right now um, with, with boards and committees um, moving towards uh, the Zoom platform or something similar and um, holding a video meeting or, or something that's web-based, web sorry, uh, versus uh, telephonic. Um, I'd, I'd ask that everybody sort of uh, remains patient with us as we, as we test new technology. Um, and, and, you know, I certainly want folks to rest assured that um, town business isn't being put on hold. There's certainly things that are non-essential. There's things that um, don't need to happen. There's uh, deadlines that are many, many months away um, that, that we won't be working towards addressing in the immediate future. Um, however, last night's uh, planning board meeting is a, is a great example. Um, they, they spoke to the folks from Tremel Crow, which is the developer who wants to build um, 288 apartments on the uh, the old footprint of Sears at the Kingston Collection. Now, those are our one, two, and three-bedroom uh, units. I, I believe 20 or less will be three-bedroom, the rest one and two. Um, but that's a that's a major, major development. And, um, you know, there's certainly deadlines that need to be met. There's there's permits that need to be secured. Um, and, and being able to hold meetings telephonically, being able to, to hold meetings um, through a web-based service like this, um, you know, it's our hope that, that when the, the COVID-19 pandemic passes, and, and it will, 
um, you know, we're, we're still ready to break ground in the fall or we'll still, re we'll still be ready um, to, to begin projects on schedule that, um, you know, have been in the works for years, um, have been, been before the town body at town meeting um, and been approved. Um, and, and those are projects where, um, you know, we'll, we'll be able to, to get that long hoped for uh, economic development and, and tax uh, relief that we've hoped for. Um, those things are still in the works. Um, our, our dedicated town employees are still going in um, and or working from home, as may be the case now, um, and, and chiseling away at these projects to make sure that, um, you know, they don't get put on hold, they don't get delayed, and, and ultimately um, they can they can continue. So, Josh, I've, I've got a couple other questions for you I'd like to ask. Sure. Um, uh, just to speak to your, um, if a board or committee has to take a vote, as you can see on your, your screen, um, at sometimes we can show all the participants of the Zoom. So if you have a board or committee that has six participants and they have to take a vote, we literally can show all six boxes and the chair can say, uh, all in favor, raise your hand or say aye. And we can see everybody raising their hand and saying aye. So it does give the ability for you to be able to take a transparent vote that everyone can see. That's one of the beauties of Zoom. Um, also, on, you, on the on these forums that you're going to have twice a week, anything that comes up, and it, it doesn't have to be because a guest happens to be on the forum. If you have a question that has to do with anything else, make sure you, you, you email the Kingston info at pactv.org, and we forward it to your town of officials who then can answer it on the next forum if needed. Now, um, there was a, uh, a pronouncement made that the election for the special um, the Senate, which was uh, the Senate, Senator DiMacito's seat, which is, I don't, does that affect Kingston? Yes. Um, yes, yeah. I'm sorry. It's, it's Kingston and, and Plymouth and um, Pembroke. That has been put off now until May 15th, I believe. Josh? I, I, don't, have, I, I don't have the date in front of me, but I, I'm sure I can pull it up while we're here. Okay. I, I know that, and, and all towns have the ability to postpone their town elections, which is all going to be happening. Um, <clears throat> Every day at noon, we have a, a Plymouth update forum in which um, there's a lot of regional information given also, which is on um, Comcast 15 and all of the Verizon uh, government channels um, and, and, um, excuse me, and on our public channel, uh, channel 13, which all of our towns get, as well as live on pactv.org slash live. Uh, Matt Moratori is often is actually on every day, and anything that has come down from the state that affects us regionally, you can get that information daily. So uh, Kathy Lenatra certainly would be a wonderful person to have on um, your your Zoom um, forums that we're having on Tuesday or Friday. Um, and again, it's a work in progress, and this isn't pretty, and it's kind of a mess, but um, we're doing the best we can to bring as much information to the town as we possibly can. Um, did you want to go around and, and have the uh, members of this particular uh, conference, a COVID ID update from the town of Kingston, have last remarks? Josh? Sure, uh, sure. And, and just one other thing that I wanted to mention um, in terms of, of, you know, the, the town employees and elected officials continuing to, to work on um, a myriad of things not, not specific to uh, COVID-19 or um, addressing the impact that this, this may have um, in, in you know, future years. Um, later this afternoon, uh, just an example of that, our, our town administrator will be, uh, I believe, having a telephone call with um, the finance committee chair and the superintendent where they'll be focusing on uh, the 2020, I'm sorry, the FY21 budget um, and how COVID-19 may impact expected revenue, specifically uh, those chapter 70 funds that we rely on for our schools. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at the challenges that we face today, uh, the issues that we may encounter tomorrow and the next week, um, but also what adjustments may be necessary um, and, and what challenges this may pose uh, many months out and, and years out. So um, just, just wanted to, to make sure that I, I mentioned that as well. Um, Julie, as, as we're going around and just getting um, last uh, comments from folks, um, I, I'd, I'd love to hear from, um, from Adam and from Paula um, how their departments and, and how the town's preparing for the unknown in all of this, because uh, we, we certainly don't know um, when this may end. We certainly don't know, um, you know what tomorrow or, or next uh, 
next week we'll bring. Um, and I think that would be uh, uh, perhaps a, a good way to, to sign off for today. Adam, why don't you go ahead? Sure, sure. So uh, as far as us preparing, as we went over earlier, um, we've got our uh, precautions in, in play as far as limiting access to the fire station, limiting interaction um, outside of the fire station to only uh, what's re what's necessary. Um, but also, uh, we're still out there answering calls every day. Um, there are plans in place uh, for mutual aid. I know the area fire chiefs have been uh, in constant contact with each other. Um, so if a department has a short fall in staff due to illness, um, that those gaps can be filled in with other departments. Um, I can't speak to the specifics of those, but I know that the fire chiefs have been in constant contact with each other regarding just that. So we're still available. We're still going to be out there answering calls day to day, not just anything COVID-19 related. And Paula? Um, I just think right now we're just trying to get as many people as possible registered in our system so that we can communicate in all forms. Uh, we are also lining up uh, different companies uh, for donations. Uh, Cisco is offered to donate some items, and we're working with them as, as well as um, taking lists of volunteers of people that uh, can help us out. It may not be right now, but it, it will probably be calling on them eventually. So, and I just want to take the opportunity to remind seniors to reach out to family members or family members to reach out to your seniors and maybe teach them a new technology and set up FaceTime and have some fun with FaceTime right now while you can't, uh, physically be together. So, and, um, Josh, if I can mention something too, before we throw it back to you, I, I noticed on a lot of the social media in Kingston, as well as all the other towns, there is so much wonderful bonding and togetherness and helpfulness going on. What uh, all the restaurants that are that are delivering um, and being open for takeout, people helping other people, people signing up to to do things. It would be great if you maybe had um, somebody on in your next forum that could speak to all the different things that are going on that have really nothing to do with the town government, but it's just people helping other people. It's just an amazing story, and it's really it's really the 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 silver lining of this COVID virus, which um, is really bringing out amazing things in people. Josh? Sure, and and uh, thank you for for mentioning uh, for mentioning that there's certainly um, you know no shortage of uh, um, Good, good stories that that are are you know eking their way out of what's otherwise um, you know pretty dismal headlines. Um, we've got a uh, a tremendous effort going on right now with the um, Silver Lake Regional School District. They've managed to um, to kick off a grab and go lunch program uh, for for students who are um, who are qualified for free or reduced lunches. And I know that's been a tremendous effort from both staff, um, the school committee, and volunteers. Um, there's, uh, you know, some great work going on at the library and we're actually going to have, I believe Mike Slauson, uh, with us on Friday's update. Um, uh, Mike's going to talk to residents about what, what they can access from the library, uh, from home. So even though the library is closed for business, uh, their website's up and there's, there's a, a wealth of resources, um, that residents can tap into, uh, from their homes. Um, certainly, you know, educational tools, children's books, movies, music. Um, and, and it's really been an opportunity for them um, as they've had to, to shut their, their physical location um, to turn residents on to, to you know, new technology and what's available online. Um, so I'll, I'll certainly keep that in mind. And, and uh, after today, I'm also going to reach out to um, Paul Gallagher, uh, the clerk. Uh, Julie, I think it would be great um, with your question regarding elections. Uh, to have him on at, at some point in the very near future just to give us all an update on um, sort of those moving dates and, and where they currently are. And we may, we may need to have him on uh, multiple times going forward just to update residents um, as to, to what the process is, um, if they want to register during this to vote, um, or, you know, simply what the dates are. Um, but I, I appreciate everybody who's taken the time to watch. I, Adam, I, I know how busy you are. Paula, I know how busy you are. Um, Julie, I know how busy you are providing services to, to more than just one community. Um, so, so thank you all for joining us at home. Uh, thank you, uh, three, for joining us uh, on today's uh, forum. 
And um, the uh, Kingston Emergency Management Team will continue to meet. Um, again, our priority is to um, to work through this and to respond to whatever uh, COVID-19 may throw at us so that we can continue to deliver uh, continuity of services to residents, to employees, and to businesses in Kingston. And um, I, I, again, I, I appreciate everything that, that folks are doing around town to keep themselves safe, uh, to keep their families safe, and to, to take care of their neighbors. Thank you, Josh. That was great. And that's a sentiment that all of our towns feel right now. So again, we'll have uh, the next um, Kingston COVID-19 uh, update, which we call a forum, will be on Friday at 10... 30 till 11 15 in the morning if you miss any of these forms or if you miss meetings once we um, schedule some meetings for the um, town of kingston they are always going to be available on video on demand if you go to pactv.org they're not available right after it ends but generally that evening or the very next day at the latest so again um we want to be your your partner in getting the word out, communicating to your, your townspeople your, uh, that the life is going on. Whatever happens, we will be able to bring it to you. And if there's any absolute emergency uh, messaging that needs to go out, we can help all the towns with that also. So for now, I'm going to thank you all for joining us today, and we will see you soon again. This is Julie Thompson from PAC-TV. See you tomorrow.